on the long journey, always he walked straight. We are a lost people in the world of the white man. We must adopt his cunning or perish. That is why you, who are now chief, have been taught the white man learning. That is left to our tribe, only the gold hidden in our hair. This is the robe of your father. It is lined with the feathers of the eagle. The eagle is strong and wise. The feathers are soft. They signify love. Therefore, be strong and wise. Love and protect your people. Oh, hello, Moya. Well, I'm glad to see you. Well, are we going to be partners and work that gold mine of yours? No. Why not? Haven't I always been your friend? I have talked with the wise ones of my people. They do not believe you walk straight. They don't. Well, they don't understand these things. They haven't been to school like you have. We'll just forget them. You and I will handle this. I must listen to my people. Why, you're the smartest man in the tribe. We both know that. What do you say we stop this nonsense and get down to business? No. All right, Moya. But I have an idea you're going to change your mind and probably tell me all I want to know about that hidden mind of yours. Goodbye. Goodbye. How'd you make out? Round up the boys and go to work. Right away. Both will be glad to see this one. Well, if you're asking me, I'd rather have that horse than a dozen Indians. Yeah, except the horse can't tell us what we got to know. Mitch. Mighty close. You ain't got a drink on you, have you, Doc? No. You ain't got a drink on you, have you, Brick? No. You had a grease them we We ain't lose nothing. Get that wall-eyed galoot and paint that for Tucson. Somebody must have dropped a nickel in it, and he's been making noises ever since. Up on the driver's seat. Better wait and look up a good dentist at Madrone. Right on this coach is the finest doctor and dentist in Arizona. Better wait. Oh, Bird, would you stop a minute, please? Hey, there's a sick man down there. You better pull up. Huh. He was sick when he got on. Come 
Yes, you are oh. fine. Fine. Oh. Are you sure, Doc? Why, there's a hole in there big enough for a gopher to live in. Oh! Fordyce Mortimer. Mortimer here is a student from the East. He wanted some field experience, so I brought him along. I hope you don't mind. Oh, of course not. Glad to have you, Mr. Mortimer. Thank you. I suppose you and Miss Belding got acquainted on the trip. Oh, yes, yes. Mr. Gale is out here to help me. He's a mining engineer and quite an authority. He seems to be quite an authority on doctors, too. Mule doctors. <laughs> Mule doctors? Mr. Gale had the impression that you were one. <laughs> Man and boy, 40 years I've been on my job and never been called in by a mule yet. Well, you may be. Any time now. Well, come along, Judy. I expect that's the town waiting for me to get back. Where are we going inside? Mr. Kazen, what are your instructions? Here are some rough maps of the mountains. Now, they're not very complete. But I suggest you study them and get ready to pack and begin your search. Now, these are the superstition mountains. Somewhere up there is the richest gold mine in this section of the country. All we have to do is find it. That's your job. All the mine is there, all right. The Indians know about it. Is it Nugget or Fort? Both. But apparently the Indians over a period of years have picked up all the free gold. Well, uh, does the mine belong to the Indians? You know how those things are. It belongs to the first white man who finds it. We used to have quite a nation of Indians in this territory, but they're dying out. And those who remain are a nuisance. Suspicious of all white men. <laughs> You can't blame them for that. Well, we've got something to say about it. 
The future of this community depends upon the proper development of its resources. Uh, pardon me, uh, but would you mind telling me uh, what this is? That's an Indian war club. Well, what do they do with it? Why, they hit people on the head with it. That's the way they settle their disputes. Thank you. <laughs> of course, I needn't remind you, this may mean a fortune for both of us. Uh, how, how many times do they hit you with those things? Just once. Oh? <laughs> Oh. How could I have a toothache anymore? He pulled it. You've got lots of teeth and several of them are aching. I'm not going to do it. Why should I take a chance on losing another tooth just because you want to see that girl again? Now listen, Ford. You're a friend of mine, aren't you? Yes, I am, but I haven't any... All right. You don't mind helping me out. It can't hurt you. Well, it did before. And you don't know how strong that old doc is. Friendship or no friendship, I positively will not go in there. Your poor friend seems to have an awful lot of trouble with his teeth. Yeah, it's a funny thing. There seems to be a definite strain of toothache running through his family. Well, I suppose you came along to be helpful. Well, to break out with the plain truth of the matter, I'm going up into the mountains tomorrow. Not till tomorrow. Thanks. And I knew you'd think it strange if I didn't drop around and say goodbye. I don't think I would have noticed it. Oh, probably not at first, but as the days passed, it would have grown on you. You see, I couldn't leave knowing you'd feel that way about it. You always worry like this about young ladies? First time in my life I've ever been concerned. And it really troubles me. <laughs> uh, maybe you'd better play something. Uh, just for me. better one. you make me feel. You don't affect me that way. It's still that. I was afraid of this. Afraid of what? I've fallen in love. Poor fellow. It'll be pretty rough on him. What? When he finds out you're going to marry me. A pure amount of air will help you. Why don't you change that ring to your thumb? Why should I? Well, from now on it won't mean anything to you on that finger. Ah! Ah! in that. I swallowed it. She did. Best thing in the world for you. <laughs> What's been your imagination? You can't find anything in the world wrong with you. I haven't any imagination. No? Well, maybe your friend has. He has. Miss Belting has convinced me I'm going to like this country. How are you feeling, Ford? All right? Oh, fine. Just fine. Maybe I can do the same for you sometime. Yeah, you won't have to worry about him anymore. 
You've done a great deal for both of us, Doctor. I'll drop in again the minute I get back to town. Good day. Good day. Good day, Doctor. Good day. Good day. Pretty fast thinker. That's smart, that young engineer. Reminds me of the young fellow I used to know by the name of Belly. <laughs> I sort of like him. Well, I don't. He called you a mule doctor. Well, Gail. This is my brother, Glenn. Glad to know you. How are you? I'm Fordyce Mortimer. Glad to know you. How do you do? As I told you, Glenn considers himself an authority on the Superstition Mountain. He just volunteered back as your guide for a few days while he looks the country over. Thanks. I hope you don't get tired of the job. No, I won't. Well, I, I'm just dying to get into those mountains. <laughs> Whoa! He was about to attack me in my heart. Not him. He's just a gopher snake. He wouldn't hurt you. See? Perfectly harmless. Oh, he doesn't look it. These things catch gophers and bugs. It's against the law to kill one of them. In fact, out here, it's about the only thing it is against the law to kill. Yeah? Well, I still don't like the look in his eyes. Have it your own way, Moya. I'm in no particular hurry. That gold isn't going any place, and you're not going any place either. That is, until you tell me where I can find the mine. He'll talk yet. Well, he ain't said nothing in three days. And if you ask me, a mule would talk quicker. Oh, he'll come around. Besides, I've got another angle. Like some more bacon, Randy. There's enough there for six men. Huh. I'm so hungry I could eat our pack horse. It's a good thing we're going back to town tomorrow. The way you're eating, there won't be any supplies left. <laughs> well, I've got an appetite now that you promised to get me out of here in the morning. I thought you were crazy about this country. Oh, I am. I am. But you know, I don't like the way those Indians followed us this afternoon. You wouldn't let a few redskins scare you, would you? <laughs> oh, Indians mean nothing in my life. <laughs> Did you know that my great-grandfather drove the Redskins out of Kentucky? Well, we're born Indian fighters, we Mortimers. I don't know. I, I guess it's just in the blood. Martin, belong to Indians. White man, go by. Sure. You're, you're absolutely right. We, we were just about to leave. Of course these Indians belong to you mountains. Or, uh, mountains. <laughs> yes. Me and my family have been a friend of the Red Men for a hundred years. Maybe two hundred years. He acts like he didn't understand a word I said. Glenn, explain it to him, will you? Tell him we're getting in. Go out. Go on, tell him. you boys here. I've got to ride by my ranch and see how things are going. Besides, I've got some big business in Queen City. Is she pretty? Plenty. How are we going to get out of these Indian infested mountains without you? Well, you just follow that trail and you can't help it. I'll see you in a couple of days. Thanks. Goodbye. Come on. Whoa. Hey! Aren't you taking the wrong trail? All trails lead out of these mountains and right now that's my life's ambition.
are you heading for? <laughs> We're trying to get out of these mountains. We work for Mr. Chetley Cazin. What do you do for Cazin? We're finding a mine for him. Uh, we've got important news. Are you them mining engineering fellas? That's right. And your news is important? Oh, very important. Well, I can save you a trip to town. You find the boss right up this trail away. Thanks. I'm trying to get some information. What sort of information? Why are you here knows where our mine is. Let him go. I'll get it in my own way. I brought you out here as a mining engineer, Gail. Now, if you don't like the way I'm running my business, get out. All right. I will. Very well. I'll be down in my office a little later and settle up with you. Get going. How do you suppose those fellows found their way in here? They must have just stumbled across us. Yeah. It would be funny if those two boys stumbled over a cliff. <laughs> I figured you'd think of that. <laughs> See the boss? Sure, we saw him. Everything is just dandy. Come on, that's not the way back. Come on, keep quiet. Hey, back to camp. Jason wants to see you. Say, I want to get out of these mountains. So do I. But I have a feeling Case and Hopes will meet with an accident. goes your accident. Well, I never thought that mining would be anything like this. Isn't there anybody on our side? Come back here. What's the matter now? We're staying here till after dark. Well, what for? There's something I want to attend to before I get out of these mountains. Well, I was hoping to die of old age like normal people. I can't figure out how we missed that. Maybe they're smarter than the boss thinks they are. Some people can do a lot of thinking without it showing. It's better not go in and close the board. You'd better not eat it. I think I can work my way into camp on the other side. But... Hey, do I have to stay here alone?
Barney, what time is it? Oh, I'll go to Up. Where'd you find him? Up in the mountains. You brought an Indian all the way down here? I brought a human being who needed quick attention. Hmm? What happened? Tried to punish him? No, a white man. Hmm. Because he wouldn't tell the location of the mine his people know. Maybe that was the mine that you were supposed to find, huh? Yeah. But Cajun thought this was a quicker way. Check Cajun? Yeah. A friend of yours, didn't he? I can understand how you feel about a thing like this. You've got to remember this is a new country out here. It's hard to tell who owns what. But somebody's going to win, and somebody's got to lose. This is no way to win. Well, we make up our own rules. We go wrong. They might not be very good ones. Well, maybe not. You've got to believe in them. Two times before, we have almost lost the mine because of Cajun. In white man's school, I learned the big lesson. Hurry. That's us, all right. The mine will no longer pay as the Indians will. You need the way of the white man. Tomorrow, I will take you to the hidden mine. You will show it. Well, we'll see what can be done about that later. mind not making that noise. I don't care where you look. I don't want any excuses. And don't come back until you found that Indian in Gale. Well, if you ask me, I got an idea they hid out at the Indian village in the high country. Then find the village. Bring them out. No white man has ever said village yet. 
You find it. Look at this. My. Good enough to make watch chains out of. And it's all alike. The richest vein I've ever run across. No wonder Cajun had his heart set on it. <laughs> you know, maybe we should have joined up with him. I'll mention your preference to Moyer. I don't think he likes you very well, anyhow. Oh, now, listen, Randy, you know I was only joking. Indians haven't much humor. No, I was thinking of that. Do you suppose that Moya's outfits still carry their scalping knives? Why not? Well, how many of the tribe is Moya bringing with him from the village? Oh, quite a bunch. Well, that's a lot of Indians. Especially if they decide that Moya did wrong in bringing us to their mines. You know, Randy, I like Moya. Fine type of bit. He can almost read your thoughts. Certainly glad to see you. We sure did miss you. Didn't we, Randy? Hello, Moyo. This is Draco. And only men of my tribe can own me. In saving my life, you have become one of us. I'm glad to be your friend, Moyo. Got a rich mind if this I say proves what I think. We've been in trouble getting with it. I trust you. Thanks. And don't worry about caves. Will you be here when I get back? Yes. White men have never been to the village of my people. If ever you need to come there, give Draco his head. He will know the way. Right. Sounds excited about it. You'd think they were getting married instead of us. I'm tired, Chet. If you don't mind. Starting in to give orders already. Well, you won't have any trouble breaking me into harness. Good night, dear. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Now, I don't think it's going to grab more. Where? She's going to bite the next one that hurt her. Uh, Chet went home a little bit early, didn't he? Oh, he, he probably didn't want to do with the office. Oh. Hmm. You know, when's uh, something like the measles? Measles? Yeah, you got to have them once uh, at least one. Uh, by the way, uh, you didn't invite that fella Gale, did you? No. Oh, that's good. Oh, he's nice enough. All that, you know, but rubbed around with Indians so much you couldn't have him in the house. Well, why not? Why not? Why, Judy, you just couldn't, that's all. Well, what have Indians got to do with it? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I didn't know that you liked him. Thank you. Please stop imagining things. I don't like him. Yes, <laughs> and I hope you do, Miss. I hope you do, Miss. Well, it looks very promising. Very promising. 
come back about nine. All right. We'll be here. <clears throat> well, there's nothing like being ready, even at your own wedding. I'm always ready. What is it, Winters? A friend of yours is in town. Gail. You brought the wrong samples. It'll run about a thousand at a time. That means the Indian took him to the mine. I've got you to thank for that. He's coming back to my place at nine. That's fine, Winters. Thank you very much. I won't forget you. Get busy. I want to see Gail in the morning, and uh, I think we'll learn the location of that mine. Well, if there's much of this stuff, few struck at rate. Can't run less than a thousand holes at a time. That's all I wanted to know. Thanks. Careful that gun, it, it may be loaded. It is loaded. Get me. Mind telling me what this is all about? No, I'm glad to be accommodating. Hasten wants to see you. All right, where is he? Let's get it over with. You'll have to wait till morning. He's busy getting married right now. Married? Sure, ain't no law against it in this state. <laughs> Queen City, in case they head that way. 
There they are. We can catch them before they get to the summit. I think I know where they're headed. I'll follow them. Go back and round up the boys. I may need them. White woman, squaw woman, just the same. Cannot tell which way they will jump. Words of wisdom, Moya. Would you mind taking me back to my father? The last time I saw him, he was throwing you out of the house. That's not true. You did it. And I hate you, both of you. You hear me? I hate you. Mind giving me my coat? Pick that up. I will not. Are you going to pick that up? can't keep me here forever, you know. And when I get back, I'll... I'll well, listen, I'll... Miss Belling, I, I tried to get Randy not to do oh, this. Oh, shut up. Aren't you ashamed of yourself talking to a friend of mine like that? Where are your manners? And you shut up, too. Hey, that's my shirt and my britches. You're loaning them to Miss Belling. Oh, Randy, I can't spare them. Here, put these on. You'll be more comfortable. I'm quite comfortable. Well, put them on anyhow. I don't like to look at you in that outfit. And I'll give you five minutes. If you haven't changed by then, I'll figure you need help. We got a mine, a bonanza. Bonanza is good. Now we'll have to pull a few ton of ore out of here, then we can build our mill. We need more men? All we can get. I will go to my village. I will bring many Indians. I have a feeling that I'll never live to make use of my field of experience. Saddle up, one man. I'm glad you like him. Maybe I'll give him to you when we get married. Moya says if you give him his head, he'll take you straight back to the Indian village. So if you were caged and never make it too hot for me, that's what I'm going to do. Say, I love you, Judas. Besides, breakfast is ready. I said breakfast is ready. Private Ford, the best style of attention. Which proves, Miss Belding, I'm not only a first-class mining engineer, but a great hunter, a good provider. Rabbit? No. I hate to do this, Ford, but Judith has refused our hospitality and she needs food. I'm afraid I'll have to resort to a bit of forceful feeding. Rabbit? No. Rabbit. Rabbit. Sure, rabbit. Now, this isn't going to be easy. But take her time. Keep her under cover. You understand? What about Miss Judith? She's got sense enough to stay out of danger. If she hasn't, well, give me that gun. Good, isn't it? Excuse me. 
coffee, Miss Baldy? I don't want any coffee. Look, you Suppose just for five minutes you stop acting like a kid that needs a spanking. Here it is. A great, big, beautiful day, and we're way up here in the mountains together. What more could we possibly ask? Right. And so far, you haven't even thanked me for what I did for you last night. What? I mean it, Judith. Well, I might have been shot. Did you ever think of that? But I had to get on the job and stop you from spoiling your young life. Your hero stuff doesn't interest me. Just think what a mess it would have been. You married the Cajun and all the time in love with me. Remember that night I brought Moya to your dad? I saw you weren't wearing Casey's ring. And did that hand me a wallet? You deserve several wallets. All right. What do you say we start with number one?
What are you doing, sir? I'm taking no chances, Doctor. You remember what happened at the last wedding. Well, let somebody drive nails. What knows how? <laughs> 